introduction to the context, while this three of you guys signing in and setting up, we'll be talking a bit, introducing the context to the to, to today's topic. Up to now, well, we have t- two weeks of no classes, remember? So I don't know if you remember this. The last thing we did was chi-squared test. What was the result of chi-squared test? Can anyone remind us? Chi squared. Is anyone Chinese here? The word chi means apparently uh, energy. But this is Latin, uh, Greek, chi, not chi. You know, have you watched the Kung Fu Panda? <coughs> Chi, energy, <laughs> Chinese uh, word for energy. I don't know if this is true, but they actually label it as Chi, energy. Yeah? So they concentrate all the energy to the hand. So chi-square test is, is a Greek word. It's not, it's not uh, Chinese. Basically, chi-square test t- told us at the time, well, evidence was that the low wages were associated with v- women and high wages were associated with men. That was uh, a significant evidence of pay gap. And also what we did during that time was whether part-time work and full-time work were associated with gender as well, or the wages, sorry. And, and these were dichotomous variables, you know, part-time and full-time were just categorical to vari- two categorical variables. Today we will learn more about how we analyze the continuous variable, and most likely you will be dealing with this sort of variable in your essay as well. Um, ultimately, the, the final bit that we do today will be to test this hypothesis. I'm stating it right at the beginning because, you know, in between we do a lot of other things, but this is just setting the scene for now uh, as an introduction, you know, to what we will do. We start with hypothesis test. Usually, introduction starts with a sort of uh, the context and stuff like this, and hypothesis test comes a bit later when you do analysis. But let's set the hypothesis test, uh, hypothesis statement first. Can you copy this case? So, aim or the, the objective is to find out if there is any relationship between weekly wages and weekly hours of work. Okay, let's go ahead now. Yes, all of it. I'll explain what they are in a minute. Shall we do the bomb? Yeah, I just want to kill the time by because some of you are still uh, setting up. I mean, haven't got the uh, workstation on now yeah, yet. So in the meantime, you copy while others set up properly. Now, so this hypothesis test is basically our aim. We aim to test this hypothesis. But in between, we have to do a few intermediate points. Um, for the analysis, we'll be making use of these two variables, TTUSHR and gross weekly wages. So I just defined them here just for you to, uh, for your information, I should say, really. Um, if you look at the, uh, if you check your right hand side corner of the screen there is a variables box 
in that list you might be able to pin down these two variables if they are visible otherwise you don't have to they are certainly there I've, I've been doing this test for the past three days now so th these variables are the ones that we're gonna uh, be focusing on okay should we move on if if for example your, yours is still on you know thinking to open on that, you, you, you might not need even to, to do anything now. Or start from where, you, where you, you know, your, your computer runs, basically. <laughs> so you, you skip all these points and then copy from your friend's uh, thing. It's up to you. You can still just sit there and watch us do, do the stuff. <laughs> or observe how the class moves, basically, flows. OK. Now, these two variables. Because we're dealing with continuous variables and continuous data and, and also the tests for continuous data or inferential tests, statistical tests, require the data to be normally distributed. Some of these tests require them, in, in fact many statistical tests. And also, we also assume that the data doesn't have outliers for the tests that we're going to do next. Because of these, we need to make sure that we don't have this non-normally distributed data. Also, we don't have these outliers. How do we know we have outliers? Is one way is to just tabulate them using this uh, single variable analysis. So summarize the first. We summarize the uh, weekly hours, and then we do the same for gross wages. So this is the test for normality for further statistical analysis. Now, okay, you guys. Let's run the first code. Uh, this is summarize weekly hours, yeah? Summarize. Double click. Run the test. Look at the screen now. Once you run the test, look at your status screen, output screen. You, what you have is uh, the summary statistics for total weekly hours. There are people who work one hour a week. And there are also people who work 97 hours a week. You know, on average, the weekly full-time work hours are usually 35 to 38 in the UK, excluding overtime. But someone is really working 97 hours a week. This is real data from 2012. Um, what I can say is that I can sympathize with <laughs> Too much work. You know, in, in, in seven days, you have 24 hours each day. So time is it, you get about 168 hours a week. And they are working, uh, spending 97 hours of that time working uh, in, in that week. So 14 hours a day on every day working. So 10 hours only left for the rest of the day. While on a normal day, we work seven hours or eight hours. Yeah, it's a half of what he does or she does here. Yeah. Okay, fine. It's probably an outlier, these two guys, but we'll find out how many of them are there. Important thing is the mean, 36 hours in total. It's average hours of work in a week is 36 which is fine, you know, 35, 38, 80 is fine. But look at another thing is that, the, is data normally distributed? Shh, what's the distribution of data? Can you, can you check that? Take a look at skewness and kurtosis and tell me if the distribution is normal. Skewness is negative 0 0.14. For a normal distribution, a value close to zero is fine. Yeah? So it's quite close to zero, isn't it? Minus zero point something is not much far from zero. Yeah, it's not 14, it's 0 point, point 14. So quite close, so skewness is, is fine, so we probably have a symmetric distribution. But how about the fat tails, kurtosis? It's close to three. Usually the normal distribution would have three, and that's close to three. So the, the distribution of weekly hours is probably normal, approximately normal. 
why don't we graph it and see? Histogram. Let's take a look. Run the next code. That's the histogram code. You should get a graph. Mine is just thinking now. Yours must be quicker than mine. Hmm. What's going on? Yeah, finally. Okay, look. It's beautiful distribution, isn't it? Normal. Very much normal. Yeah, density curve, normal curve. There's a clustering around 40, a huge mass around 40 is fine. I don't see an outlier. Some guys here working 97 hours, but not many. Also some here about close to zero hours, one hour. So little evidence of non-normality. So that passed the test, first test of normality. Close that graph, please. Now let's test the gross weekly wages. Guys, let's test the gross weekly wages. <coughs> because of this, because we are using all this, I mean, these two variables in our further analysis, we will really want to make sure that they are normally distributed. You know, correlation analysis, for example, requires the distribution to have approximately normal distribution with no outliers. Shh, copy this, please. So this, we repeat the same exercise, but this time we just replace the we total hours with wages, these two. So summarize gross weekly wages and give some details, yeah? Comma detail implies detailed summary. Run the code and please tell me if you if you think the data or gross weekly wages are normal distributed or not. They are not, why? Skewness is 16. Wow, skewness is 16, yes. That's a huge deviation from symmetry. That's because, is it positive or negative distribution? Oh, skewness. Is it positive or negative? Positive, yeah, it's a positive value, 16. Look, some people are really earning 5 pounds a week. While others are earning 20,000, 23,000 a week. 23,076. Who might be earning that much a week? 80,000? No. That's why they are protesting, yeah? <laughs> Investment banker is a uh, possibility. Football players, possibility. Yeah, football players, they usually earn hundreds of thousands, isn't it? They usually earn more than that. But th these are possibilities. So because of these two guys earning as little as 5 pounds an hour, a week, that's, I don't know. Remember this data, we had someone who earning 0.47 pounds, 47 pence basically an hour. Yeah. This is probably that guy working seven, uh, three, four days a week, uh, three, four hours a week. And the guy here, the outlier guy, skewing the mean, look at the mean, 40, 478. Well, it, it sounds average, well, normal, you know. It sounds more like a, a, not a bad, Earning, isn't it? Average earning is probably around 500 pounds and 2,000 pounds a, a month. But this is basically skewed towards the uh, to, towards the right because of uh, skewness value. I'm just judging it by skewness value. Look at this one. Skewness is 16. That's a huge value. Far, far away from zero towards the right hand side of the distribution. And kurtosis is much larger than three. So this combined together just gives us that, it tells us that the, the data is not normally distributed. Why don't we visualize it then? Histogram would probably be better uh, way of doing that. Visual analysis, yeah? Let's do the histogram. Oh, why is it doing that? Oh, finally. So it takes time now for my laptop to bring the histogram up. So you might be, okay, it's quicker this time. Look. Right skew, huge on the tail here. There's, uh, there's 23,000, there's 15,000 or something there. And then a lot of people right there, you know, these few people are skewing the data to the right. Yeah, it's, it's In practice, we should really stop here and don't do further analysis because of the skewed nature of the data. We shouldn't really carry on further. But we have remedies for uh, removing the skewness and kurtosis and removing the outliers. So these outliers are distorting the picture. But for the sake of learning, we are ignore it. Uh, we're gonna ignore this evidence. We just assume that 
Wages are normally distributed. Total hours are normally distributed. So let's go ahead then. Just for the sake of learning, yeah? But in practice, you shouldn't really carry on. You should stop at that point. At the, you know, with the graph. If you don't have any option, any other data to replace the skewed data. Now, we do now a t-test. Assuming that two variables we've just looked at are uh, normally distributed. But we're not going to do t-test for wages. It's only for the other guy, the weekly total hours, yeah? So, copy the hypothesis statement for t-test. <coughs> Now the aim here is to see if there is any gen gender difference in wages. Oh, sorry, hours of work. Do women work or do men work more than women or the opposite, yeah? If you find that the men work more hours than women, it's, it's an evidence that, that the wage differential is due to maybe partly due to the, uh, due to these uh, weekly hours rather than due gender, yeah? So that's... However, we don't know if the difference between them is significant or not. So t-test allows or enables us to, 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 to have an investigation of that point. Uh, what? D, C, W, yeah. hmm? D, C, W. Uh, D, what is it? We conduct the t-test difference. Oh, uh, this one, or the first one, one yeah, this one, difference yeah. in average, oh, weekly hours between male and female, sorry, between, BTW is between, sorry, mm -hmm. I just, we don't, I don't have enough space, so weekly and between. So do you want us to write the exact same? Of course, you have scre enough screen there, right, enough space, I don't, because if I don't, type, <laughs> if I type the whole thing, it, you, you know, I'll have to be scrolling sideways. So this is weekly, this is between. Can you ask Full, yeah, write the full statement. Sir, is there meant to be test with two T's or one? T-test is one T. T-test, that's because the variable sex is not coded as variable sex. No, it's talking about T-test, isn't that? Yeah, fine. This one. Which one are you talking about? For the first one, this one. T-test. There meant to be a hyphen. No, 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 no. Re replace this with gender. Oh, yeah, you need gender. Guys, I, I'm trying to tell you, but you're stopping me. And <laughs> I'm trying to explain you why you have an error. It's because your, your sex variable is uh, named as gender. That's why I, I'm not getting what you're trying to tell me. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you one thing, you, you are asking me another one. Yeah. If it was an error, it would be an error. I mean, I would have changed it. I've been using this code for the past three days. So yeah, it's, it's, a it's a gender. You have, you have, you coded it as gender, yes, right? Did you do that? Huh? Can you, can you change and run the code? Yours is fine. Yours should work. You see, yours is gender, so that's why you're getting that error. Everyone is happy now? Let's move on then. Okay, um, let me run it as well. Okay, in the meantime, I, I, I want you to tell me what the, the meaning of p-value is. What does it tell us? Okay, let's, let's digress a bit. Tell me what the p-value is in, in your hypothesis testing. What's the, in, the intuitive meaning of p-value? What's the intuition? What intuition do you have? How did you learn P value? Pra by practicing it. No, no, P value, P. Ignore the screen stuff. Ignore everything here, it's, it's not related. P for probability, ignore this. What's, what, what, what's the intuitive meaning or the, the meaning of P value? Yes, go on. Yes. I don't know if that's an intuitive answer, but this is the book answer. The thing that you get in the books, yes, correct. But how would you explain it to a, a you know, your, your sibling who never done a probability before? Just try the motion. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they probably get puzzled, isn't they? Yes. That means probably you still don't have that intuitive answer, intuitive understanding yourselves, guys. Her answer is not wrong. It's just when you can explain it to a 
to a, you know, to a random guy outside who never had statistics. That's when you understood it properly. Yeah. Basically, there's no difference. The first one, there's no difference. The last one is there is a difference. Oh, no, we're not looking at this. Oh. Just, uh, just the general meaning of p-value. You see, you're writing this essay now in two weeks' time. How do you write it then down? Is it when there's 0.5% do not seem to be real? <laughs> okay. Okay, look guys. P-values are probability values, right? Yeah. P-values are probability. Look at this. PR is a P-value. PR. Probability of getting a, a T less than this small T is basically 100% here in the first case. And this one is less than 0 0.01. That one is even less. But intuition behind is this. The P-value tells us, shh guys, the P-value tells us the probability of obtaining this result being by chance alone. And the values that are less than 0 0.01 is usually telling us that there's a little chance that this is chance. This is, this is, there's a little probability that this is a chance e event. Makes sense? It's just the measure of probability for getting this result by chance. Yeah? Now, okay, that was a digression, but I just wanted to bring back all this lecture stuff that you had. Yeah? P value is the probability of obtaining this result by chance alone. And now that result, what we're looking at is this t step, 40. This is much, much greater than 2. A value 2 is usually something that's in borderline for 5% 5 5 uh, uh, significance level. OK, let's interpret this table. Now we go slowly now. The group male-female is our independent variable. What we're looking at is whether this independent variable affects our number of work or the number of hours we work during the, during the week. So look at this now. The male observations or the number of male in this uh, uh, the, the data is 4,800 male or females are 5,400. So it's a quite balanced data, about 52, 52 to 40, 48 if I remember. Now, on average, men work 41 hours a week while female or women work 31 hours a week. This is a huge difference, isn't it? Because it, it tells us that majority of females are part-time. That alone tells us. Yeah, the 10 hour difference is probably because of part-time work contracts, most likely. The difference is, the diff here, yeah? Is 942, nine hours, about 10 hours difference. The t-test uh, helps us to investigate if this difference is statistically significant. For this test, we have a null hypothesis. Remember the null hypothesis? There's no difference. We stated already, yeah? There is no difference between weekly hours of men and women. Now, alternatively, there are three of them. Alternative hypothesis. First one is this one. HA difference is less than zero. If the difference is less than zero, what we're looking at here is that the male work hours are less than female because the Diff is calculated as the male minus female work hours. For this to be less than zero or negative, you know, difference has to be, well, male mar must work lo less hours than the female. So what's H -A? Alternative hypothesis. H1 is HA here. H null is, is, is null, properly done, yeah? But it's just HA is, is, an, is a H1. Now, second, this is the one tail hypothesis test. Now, we're looking at now two tail right in the middle between the two. We have two tail tests. Now, here we're looking at, uh, what do you call this? The difference is non-zero, basically. Because that excl exclamation mark and equal implies not equal. Let me draw it here. What I'm trying to say is this. Exclamation equal is basically equivalent to not equal in mathematics. Stata just calls this thing as not equal thing. So if you were stating this in, in your Word document, this statement, your H alternative will just be diff not equal zero. So that's Stata's way of understanding not equal. Yeah? They don't have not equal symbol, that's why. Yeah? So that's the middle part. That's one alternative hypothesis, the second one. And the third alternative hypothesis is that 
the difference is positive. Yeah, difference is positive. That implies the male work hours are greater than female. Yeah. Now p values are now, you know, the, the the things that we just discussed. What are they? I'm gonna ask you again. What is the meaning of p value? Oh. I'll just <laughs> two minutes ago I defi defined it for you. Go on. It's the probability of this result or alternative hypothesis being obtained by chance. Look at this. Probability for the first alternative hypothesis is exactly one. That is 100% by chance. So, what we do is we go with the null hypothesis because the alternative hypothesis is, is obtained by chance. Yeah, it's not recurring all the time. It's chance result. But then the look at the second one. Probability of obtaining this result by chance is very low. It's 0, 0.00 something which you don't know, but it's quite close to zero. So that this event being chance event is zero, almost zero. And also probability of obtaining this alternative result here, difference being greater than zero, is also close to zero. Yeah? Obtaining this by chance is also close, close to zero. Given these two rejections of null hypothesis and then acceptance in one case, you know, two rejections imply out of three hypotheses. We we'll go ahead with the rejection result. Yeah. So what what this result means is this: the the difference in the work hours of men and women is statistically significant. Yeah. Or some book language. If I use the book language or the the, the way that the book describes it, that the these two samples are from different distributions. Their mean values are not equal. Yeah, in two cases we rejected the null hypothesis of this being equal to zero, difference being equal to zero, so we rejected that. So the work hours are statistically significantly different from, you know, work hours of men and women are statistically significantly different. Maybe that's why we have pay gap. Not necessarily by gender because of gender, but because the work hours probably, because Men appears to work significantly more hours than women in a week. As a result, we may have that gender no, not gender gap, pay gap, driven by so driven by this work hours. Now this uh, this also indicates that uh, we can use work hours, weekly work hours, as our control variable between gender and pay as a middle mediating variable. For your analysis, you replace gender with regions, ethnicity, and everything else. Yeah, and then use this work hours as well. Now, quick question to you guys: How, how, to what extent you think you, you know, what's the extent of your progress? In other words, what have you done so far in your assignment? Readings. Fine. Discuss what we're doing. Discuss what you're doing. You have remember three three more weeks. I don't know how many assignments do you have other than this. Two more. Yeah. Three yeah. assignments. All deadline the same week? Yeah. yeah. What? Is it two or two more? Yeah. Three. Three. So there's, there's two more. Two more, yeah? Are they individual? Oh, the others? Yeah. No, yeah, the others are individual. Yeah. Oh, the marketing people have three. So they have four altogether. Oh, four, four even? <laughs> yeah. Accounting okay. people have three. Alright, so you guys are accountants. You, are you guys are accountants, yeah? Okay, you are accountants. All right. So the earlier you finish this, the better it is. You know, by now I expected you to do. You know, each week we do a new topic. Yeah, I expected you to sit down with the groups and work on the. And then like after class, you don't have the hour. Like six o'clock, so you must be hungry by now, or whatever it is. Okay, <laughs> it's hard to get together. <laughs> There's a lot of things, right? Now what I did is I, I I found it hard sometimes, you know. I also was a student. I was a student all my own. Ten years of my <laughs> life was uh, was spent or had been spent as a student and I had a group work as well. We worked together. You know? Looking at you I realize that you have more time to do something else than working. Okay, why don't we copy the next sets? I'll explain what they are in a bit. I think 
I don't know. It's my, it's my, it's my view on this. The media, the the social media. No, it's taking more time from your, you know, from your uni. Definitely, because every time I am turning around, I see people looking at their mobile phone screen quickly. Or even if I'm speaking, they just simply take out mobile phone and do something with it. A lot of, not everyone, a lot of you guys. So it's basically, it's, it's costing, the social media costing you a university degree, basically, proper one. You know, first degree. I think I told you about Queen Mary's uh, commitment to hiring his, its own graduates. If I remember, it was in the first week. I met yeah. one student who was recently hired in January as student something, I don't remember. And he tells me, uh, that he got 2.2, not even 2.1, not, not 1.1, one, one, 2.2. And I said, how, how come you managed to get Apparently, they are also helping those who get 2.2 because they will struggle to find a job with this degree. Yeah, And he, they also have a huge amount of debt. And he says, I was involved, got into the wrong crowd, basically, in the first year. And then I couldn't leave them. I couldn't leave the crowd, this wrong crowd. And ended up getting this, uh, blowing up this 30,000 30, on 2.2 degree, which was basically virtually useless now. He may find obviously with experience another job, but he has to stay here for a long time. But obviously you want accounting job, yeah, not admin job, right? As such, you should be really with studying properly. Let the let the mobile phone rest for 40 minutes. Okay, run the scatter graph now. So I hope everyone copied it. Yeah, run the scatter graph. Next thing is once we identify it or once we concluded that there is statistically significant difference between the male and female work hours, we can also now kind of conclude that maybe these work hours are driving the wage difference differential, yeah? But how do we not find out? Well, one way is to look at the correlation analysis, if there is any association between the two, wages and then hours, yeah? Ignore the gender for now. Let's look at wages and hours. So, scatter basically, is a is a is a code or syntax for drawing a scattergram. Gross wages and TTUSHR. These are basically two variables we are looking into. This is the best bit, guys. This is the best bit. I like this one. Each dot here, each dot here is a person. You know, we had two th ten thousand two hundred ninety-two people in this sample. Each dot is a person. This guy is earning, well, working about 90 something hours and earning 23,000. This is earning, working around 40 hours but earning 15,000, yeah? And these guys, suppressed ones, the squashed ones, are actually remaining 10,000 people. So these outliers are suppressing the rest of it. So, someone Yeah, the last guy here, look at this. Uh, working almost 90, so it's actually 97 hours, isn't it? This is probably that guy but earning, I don't know, close to zero, very low. We don't know if it's close to zero. What we do is, we're gonna remove all these outliers, all these big numbers. You know, these, these are useless spaces because they are, they are actually not helping us. You know, these guys are coming from space. They are not really part of the group, yeah? Alien, like, yeah. This, this part, majority are here, so that these are, they need to go, these outliers. So let's, Let's remove them. So we're going to remove the top 1% earners. So that's the next code. Run the next code. We are looking at only those people who earn less than 2,000 pounds now. And now we can see the magnification of those squashed guys. You know, remember that the, 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 the majority were at the bottom. Now the maximum earning here is 2,000. Now we can see better that someone working 97 hours is actually earning about 100 pounds a, a week. What's that? Wow. It's about 100 pounds, isn't it? 500, then so it's this, this point here is about 500. So, so there are several people who are working 97 hours. Someone is actually earning 2,000, which is probably not still, uh, not a decent salary because 97 hours, and some others are earning it by working only 40 hours, while this guy is earning, earning that amount by Working, spending half, more than half of their life working. It's gone. Hmm? This one, lucky one. <laughs> He's probably an executive. You know the chief executive officers and things like this? They usually work elsewhere as part-time people, part-time 
trustees and board of directors, they spend an hour or two, but earn huge amount. Just for being there, celebrities do the same. Spe giving a speech of what, one hour speech or two hours, they get paid huge amount. So we don't know exactly what it is. But the, the point in this scatter graph is to see if there is any relationship, a linear relationship between the data, between hours and wages. Can you see that? Is there any linear relationship here? No, yeah. If you put a line across, you don't really see any any kind of linear relation. In other words, the dots are far away from the line. If you, if you were to put a line, yeah, if these dots are far away. <coughs> up to here, for example, decent decent linear relationship here, yeah? up to the up to forty hours of earning. But as soon as people work more than forty hours, their earnings jump. So they so they have just linear part and then no linear part here. Yeah? They want 40 hours, they, they, the distribution changes. So in other words, let me let me show you what it is, please. If you if you have X and Y, for a linear relationship, the dots should really lie close to close to this line. Yeah, correlation is a is, is a is a major association, linear association between variables. So this would be a linear relationship. But that is not. Maybe at this point we should stop as well, you know. We we, we said that we expected the, the relationship to have a linear association or the, the two variables to have a linear association if we are uh, going to look at Pearson's correlation coefficient. Uh, by the way, you know what Pearson's correlation coefficient is, yeah? Yes? How to interpret it? What are the range of values that the Pearson correlation coefficient takes? You just copied it from the script, I think, yeah? This, this, this last part calculates it. So let me ask you, uh, what are the range of values, this, what is the range of values, I should say, that the, this Pearson correlation coefficient takes? Isn't it like two, two different yeah, when they correlate, yeah, yeah. We, we estimate one number for the, for the assessment of this variable relationship. So what's that number usually? What are the extreme values that it can take? No? So Pearson's correlation coefficient, if you remember from the lecture notes, R usually is what we denote by, takes minus one and one as extreme values. Minus one and one. Minus one is perfect negative correlation, measure of perfect indication of negative correlation. And one is also perfect positive correlation. So it's just they both perfectly correlation, uh, measure of perfect correlation. It's just one is negative, one is positive. Now, what is, uh, what values usually indicate weak correlation? What sort of range of values indicate uh, weak correlation? Zero. Close to zero, close yeah? Zero. Value is close to zero. Pearson's correlation coefficient mm -hmm. value is close to zero indicate weak correlation between the two uh, variables. So let's estimate our correlation coefficient between the two variables and see which one, uh, uh, how, how strong or how weak the, the relationship is between uh, uh, wages and total hours worked in a week. What did you get, guys? I, mine is behind the thing. It's 0 0.4583. That's a moderate correlation. Moderate correlation is uh, is, is is a value in, is is a value close to 0 0.5, yeah, around 0 0.5. So it's a moderate correlation, and also you see the one and one, the two diagonal elements, one and one. This is an indication of perfect correlation. But notice that this is uh, this only happens when you correlate wages by wages and also hours by hours, basically hours with hours and wages with wages. Yeah, one thing correlating with, with itself is usually gives us perfect correlation. In, 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 in reality, two different things correlating perfectly is impossible. You don't see them. So the correlation between wages and total hours is, is moderate. Fine, we see that there is some sort of association. Is this association significant statistically? It looks like p-value says yes. Yeah, you see the p-value. Obtaining a value as, uh, as by chance is quite low here. It's just below the correlation coefficient. You have 0, 0.00 something there is basically a p-value for this relationship. So we reject the null hypothesis that the uh, correlation is zero. In other words, we reject the null hypothesis that there is no relationship. 
Now, however, however, what's this? We had outliers, and Pearson's correlation coefficient is not robust to outliers. In fact, it actually assumes that there are no outliers. So this result is nonsense. We shouldn't really rely our inference on this result. What we do now is we're going to skip one thing and then go to uh, an important one. We transform now. We will transform our wages variable to a log wages variable. So copy this, please, and I'll explain what it is. If we don't have enough time for the rest of it, so we'll stop here once we... You know, maybe one more, one more line will be... We can squeeze in one more line of code after this. Copy all of it, please. Natural log. Now, ladder is a command for transforming the uh, the original variable to different. Uh, or this code allows us basically to transform the original variable to different uh, forms. Uh, we will be working with a log form for a reason. I'm going to show you why. Now, this let the let the gross wages is basic. This line gives us the table of transformed variables, while the second line gives us the graph of transformed variables in histogram. We will do the second one, yeah? We will run the second one. Please run the second one. Usually it's, it's easy to see, you know, it's, it's more clear when you see the graph than table. So let's see that. Um, my table is taking time. So run it, please. You should get a set of 12 graphs, or nine apparently. What we are doing here is this. Let the code, the code let the basically in the first one is raising every observation in the wages uh, variable. Every observation, we have 10,292 of them. So it's raising every observation to the power three cubic transformation. And you see this? The larger value is getting even larger with the cubic transformation. So that's not normal distribution. So next one is just raising each observation to, to the power two, squaring. That's not helping us either, not transforming our variable into normality. Identity, I have no idea what it is, but I can tell you that it's not useful either because you have lots of outliers still lying there. And square root, taking square root improved the distribution of it. No, if you take a square root of a big number, it will be a small number, which is fine, but the small numbers get even smaller as well. So we have some sort of improvement here. The, the, you know, it, we have some sort of zooming in kind of transformation here. But really the best one is the log. You see, the, the wages variable becomes normal now, log wages now. You see, there is no outlier, no significant outlier. The log transformation is the best transformation for normalizing right skewed data. And raw data was right skewed, right? Yeah. So transforming using one over square root actually makes the, uh, the, the new variable and more left skewed data. Yeah, everything else is left skewed now. So we stick to log transformation. It is clear. What we did here is that we are now creating a new variable of the original old original wages variable by taking its log transformation. Make sense, guys? What we are not doing is we are not chucking away the data. We preserving the information. In the, we just take the log of each observation. So if you take the log of twenty three thousand and seventy six pound, it will become something around ten. If you take the log of 500, it will be something around 8. And the difference between 8 and 10 is, is not much.
but between 523,000 is huge. That's why that outline was magnifying the effect of, you know, the non-normality. So, no log transformation really helps us to normalize the distribution of wages. And in the last line here, you basically created or generated a new variable called LGRSSWK by taking the log natural logarithm of the old variable. Yeah, in the brackets. And if you run this last code, please run the last code, you will have the new variable called LGRSSWK appearing at the bottom of your observations list. Yeah? Now, scroll down, last bit now, and... <laughs> last bit, don't rush. Yes. scatter graph you will see that scatter graph is much more uh, uh, improved version of the old one we are still correlating wages with total weekly hours hmm? yours didn't work did you run the generate code the code to generate the uh, LN hmm? The second, one? Uh, second one is just Pearson's correlation coefficient. You mean this one? That's the Pearson correlation. So let's have a look at yours. Uh, no, it's the generator. Yeah, that one. Now we can run it. Now it should work. Scatter graph should work after generating the value first. Generate the value first. Did it work? No, it's still not working. run the last code it's just correlation coefficient uh, you see that it's it's an improved version no I have W I don't know his name though uh, what's your name it has a W yeah but you all didn't have that's why it was misspelled but leave it you see by the way when you do the assignment when you do the assignment make sure that you you check spell check first before you run the code you know, you might get, you know, what you call this, stressed out quickly if ex a species or a state gives you these errors. Mm. These are simple errors. Spelling errors are simple. 
Have you done the correlation? Yes. 71, strong correlation. After the transformation, you see there's an association. So read the, the layout uh, outline, please, then. Okay, see you next week.